And then Rongvalder had been talking about it a little bit prior. And that is that there's a lot of, we push tension, but then we fall back and then we come forward again. Instead of that scenario where we push tension and then we just fall. And then we walk forward and you push tension and you fall out. That's not actually what we're gonna, we're gonna show today is you push tension and you fall to, and then you roll back in. Oh. That way your opponent and, and in that fall and roll really depends on how much tension your opponent, you may push tension and that opponent comes at you and, and then as soon as he releases, you roll right back into another corner. So, you know, if it's the right or the left, it doesn't matter, but that's what I wanna talk about a little today. That's where we get in that constant engagement with our opponent. Cool so I do it a lot. I do it a lot where, you know, I, I, I'll tense and I'll roll into tense, roll back, tense, roll back. And then depending on what my opponent does, if they, if I tense and they push and I'm, I'm leading, I'm push, pushing that hip, I'm following them until they're like, oh, no, I don't want it. And then I roll back again. So there's a lot of connectivity there, but in the, in the kind of wrong brother, broke it out into this figure eight exercise that allows us to kind of roll through both sides of learning to push, pull, push, pull, and just, just kind of rolling. And oh. the idea you're using your hips to constantly control that flow. So this creates that flow that we are looking for. Okay, and so in this case, the crux of the figure eight is uh, facing your opponent. Yes. Want to go? Yeah, I mean, so if if Sive's my opponent here, what I have is uh, here. Let's get right here. All right. So what I have is I may push her, and then she comes back, and then I might. Oh. Okay. idea so we practiced a little bit of that right we practiced a little bit of that before um in that push tension push pull game uh in this exercise we're going to actually apply a technique kind of a drill to it but first all right out in facebook land uh obviously um we only have a couple people here today but that's fine uh, we're going to go through a little bit of the push and pull at the end, the figure eight exercise. Uh, we're going to put a couple cones out to help that exercise. We'll try to detail it. For now, we're going to go back and really push footwork again. Uh, I don't know about you. It's uh, been a little bit of time. I know uh, I had some vacation and some weather issues out here, so we haven't been together. And uh, I went back to doing the ladder Tuesday night, and i like, where are my legs? Um, so let's get, uh, let's get that strength back and, uh, let's start with, uh, a little bit of our warmups, uh, uh, on, as a note, I actually talked to somebody I actually worked with. I showed them through some basic ladder drills. They started hitting the internet and started doing ladder drills. Uh, they couldn't actually, they had ankle problems. They couldn't run for a while because their ankles, um, and uh, they actually said that a lot of the ladder drills, doing them nice and slow and building, actually allowed them to get to a point their ankles don't. Another example, uh, just like knees have been an example for a while, that strengthening the things that, you know, we sometimes when it's physically hurt, you have to allow it to heal. But once you get past that healing part, you have to rebuild that strength around it. And I think a lot of people, shy away from the rebuilding of the strength around it because they're afraid it's going to hurt again or it hurts a little bit so starting exercise nice and slow working through warm-ups and things like that really do help build that muscle around that and strengthen the weakness so all right let's do our flat foot squats we be great our folks online been doing this for a long time i'll go double check make sure it's just it's only a, a few of us right now, but uh, I know there's been a couple of people that were interested in, hey, you, 
Yeah, a couple of people are interested in uh, jumping in lately. So we'll see. I think uh, going into the winter, um, if it's anything like ours, uh, we're having some site issues as well. We may be doing this stuff a little bit more. All right. Oh, awesome. Got a bunch of people. Good to see you guys all. We're, we're hiding uh, we're hiding our laptop behind a tree so I can actually see faces and stuff. So, uh, And there's four of us here, so you'll see us running through ladders. Um, next one. These are on our toes, on the balls of the feet. Let's keep that back. Nice and straight. Straight down. Heels come off the ground. Up and then push on those toes. It was interesting because uh, we had a really large conversation on Coach's Corner and somebody actually brought up toes, uh, you know, basically from power generation point. And that really a lot of that power generation flows through that front of your foot, not just the ball of your foot, but even your toes. And I was like, yay, somebody finally said it. Everybody still out there? It's, I don't get to see, so I know our internet is a little rough. I see people moving. Awesome. All right. Our next piece. Although it looks like somebody's going to be running over here to. Uh, take a jump in. I can't tell who that is. But. Next piece. So this is really this exercise that we're going to focus on toes a little bit more. And that is this exercise where we're pushing all the way through and leave, get leverage on your toes a little bit. And then all the way back. Again, this exercise should be your hip moving from front to back not to turn your front foot in try to even point it slightly out and then all the way forward again get that strength yeah and all the way back once you got good balance in your center you can actually lift your back foot all the way back and then lift your front foot because this back foot ends up pretty flat on the ground Let's do a half a dozen of those, or a dozen of those, please. Good to see you again. I see you made the trip. Oh, yeah. Awesome. You can go ahead and jump in. The cameras okay. are going. It doesn't matter. We have a, uh, we're lucky. We get a bunch of, uh, bunch of folks coming in from Chicago and all over today. I think everybody saw that everybody was going to be uh, coming out, and we have a perfect day for it. So uh, it should be a, a good day for lots of stuff going on. Good part too is some of the rules have last, last, uh, laxed enough now that we can actually be brought out coffee and some hot beverages. Okay, switch feet if you have it. Work those toes. Sometimes this, this is the difference of I'm gonna throw a shot and then I fall in because my toes aren't strong enough to actually stop me. So as soon as you get on the other side of your ball, your foot, you're falling in. Where I throw a shot, my toes are strong enough to stop, I can come back. Instead of falling into my opponent's range, especially if they're a, a B or an A range fighter, then you're falling into their strength and that's not what you want. And of course we, uh, even when you do have to fall in, we, we all know, we all learn how to fall in and break to the right or the left. And so I have to say for a lot of people, their footwork, I've got a chance to see a few people that have been doing stuff and their footwork has actually been very good. You can see that they got good strength in their feet, that they're moving. Um, some people get caught up in a fight with the other person. That's a, it's just kind of a mental space. You have to be disciplined and uh, discipline is something that gets learned as well. Um, 
Probably, I, I would say the biggest weakness I saw in, in many times was, was distance, control of that distance, and, uh, and really throwing. Uh, we're, we're still, a lot of people are still rushing throws instead of testing and trying to make sure that they're in a place that is safe to throw a blow. All right, let's get a little bit slow stretching here. So earlier you guys were talking about getting tired and and uh, you know like uh, you 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 feel like you're you're as tired as you were when you first started doing everything. I think the difference is even with like Ron Balder and myself is if you look a lot of that a lot of times you know we're moving twice as much as others. We're spending a lot of time in tension and controlling people's tension. Uh, intensity and, and connectivity is there a lot longer. So there's a lot of things happening inside that is hard to see, but that still uses energy. So it's, it's not surprising that, that sometimes you, you burn through it. But the, the trick is, you know, before when you got into those spaces, spaces, you would burn out much faster and your recovery would be a lot slower. So what I would say is look for how fast you recover in a, in a day. So you go out and fight, see how long, get a feel for, you know, that was pretty good. That's a nice long time. And then see how fast you recover to the next fight. Because, you know, when you're first, when you're first doing it, you, you get a couple of fights in and you're pretty much done for today. Whereas as you start understanding your body better and knowing how to control your own tension, It becomes much more like running or a jog. Except when it's 800 billion degrees and humid outside. <laughs> and then I still just dive. Yeah, that's, that's the weather. Though. Yeah, and then the weather drops 10 degrees. I'm like, oh, I have all the endurance in the world. So, apparently I just need to do a lot more hot weather and garbage. There you go. <laughs> All right. So, okay, we got some good stuff. I'm going to just double check and make sure everybody's still out there. Somebody wants to yell. That would be good. I see a bunch of people online. I see Beth there putting glasses okay. on. That's good. All right. I just want to make sure that we're not losing anybody. All right. So, our uh, master of the ladder is here. She's going to start us up. All right, we're gonna start out with a nice, simple two foot run. Oh, that's just one, two, one, two. Nice and tight. Remember, keep those knees bent. Do it leading with the other foot. Backward. Okay, a trip on our ladder. It's gonna be great. <sighs> backward. Just want a backward. <laughs> Nick, All keep right. on the balls of your feet here. So pick your least favorite foot and do that one backward. Oh, she has to make it that way. <laughs> How do you like that? Your least favorite is usually the one that needs the most work. You're like, man, I really hate doing stuff on my left side. Guess what? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> there we go. Smart. Smart. That is, that is the secret trick. If you're tripping over yeah. your ladder a lot, just go next to it. And that's it. Just keep on those toes, and then your heels won't catch. I realize I'm probably standing and blocking the whole camera, but <laughs> how are they looking online? Uh, they are looking. Look like Bess is pretty done. She's looking at the next one already. Manicus is burning through extra. Balls burning through extra. Awesome. All right, let's go. All right, so we're gonna wake up everybody's calves now. Oh, I hate Do these. Do some hopscotch. Get down in your squat. 
And this is all bouncing off your cans. Our favorite. Now yeah. bend our knees a little bit. Because uh, my feet tried to slide right out. Right out oh, sideways. Jackie, that's, <laughs> oops, that's okay. I was just going to tell you, that's awesome, Jackie. Like, how about you? Actually, your height is perfect. I can't do a middle split. I can't do no, any you split. Can't. Oh. No. All right. So make sure, no. again, that you try to keep your head perfectly straight. You don't want it bouncing up and down. Backwards. Yeah, no more need to do it backwards. Be careful with it. Not tucked under. This one is really tempting to end up here. Keep it under. And die. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie's kicking ass here. She's uh, doing a really nice job keeping straight up, keeping your head flat. I love it. Don't focus on the pain, focus on your core. Our next one basic drop step skiers. Let's just open and then we close. As usual, remember if you have questions, go ahead and stop, ask us. That's the best way to go. Uh, right now, we're, you guys are kind of the cameras behind it, our, our, our big monitors behind the trees. So if you see anybody else, uh, you all know what they're supposed to look like. So if you see somebody, just speak up, say, hey, might want to try it this way or don't forget this. You're falling with your head. Kind of yeah, so here, yeah, we're, watch, here I am, stay right there. Okay. So you're gonna almost like lift this foot up. Fall, there you go, yeah, fall. No, go forward, just lift, yeah. Yeah. right over there. There you go, yeah. perfect. That's the win. Remember, lead with your body. Don't reach out behind you. And that's the trick: is you don't reach with the foot. Your your hip literally drops with that foot. The body is falling, and your you foot just sort of catches you. Yeah. Um, you go. Good. So again, lift that foot. Yep. There you go. Lift the foot. There you go. Yep. Exactly. Let's start. Good. Now try to keep your body perfectly straight. No turning. Good. That's better. All right. Like we are ready to hit the next one. Now we're just going to take that. We're going to make it wider. The best way to make it wider is get lower. Yeah, so this one, you're going to actually give a little extra push. So if you lift this, you're going to push off that foot. Not up, but sideways. Okay. Uh, I'll do it. Yep. And try to land in your good stance at when you're done. How's your legs doing today or your knees? I know I'm not used to Nessa being so quiet. Not like right in front of her camera, she's back away, but she, she gave the so so hand signal. Mm. All right, we'll just keep, uh, do what you can, Nessa. This is the same thing. Do it nice and slow so you can build that strength back in those. I'm a little straighter than I'm used to. That's, so I was wondering yep. if, yep. so she's on it. Next, we do the shuffle version. So 
Now we take that outside foot and move it first. So we're gonna come here where our feet are one in front of the other and then open. And make sure that you're not turning that toe in ways, inwards. You wanna keep that, you notice our toe stays actually pointed out still. If you turn your toe, this is what happens. Here we are, if I turn my toe, my hip turns. And then I'm turning. That's not what we're looking for. Right? Like yeah, head like okay, sticks so, pointing straight out of your go. hips. Good. They would go straight, to go straight down the ladder. Right there you go. Yep. There you go. Yeah. Now go to head. Yeah, they're gonna put one foot in the box. There you go. And then the other foot can come right to right to it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Good. That's better. So remember in the shuffle, real snappy, it? The, the key is be careful of actually doing the full cross. We'll do those. But in a shuffle, you're literally almost that heel should be in front of the other toe. You can see how it. You're placing foot with the other one instead of we'll get to the bigger one in like half right. a second. Because then we'll do a crossover. You're going to do that backwards? Yeah, we'll do it backwards. So. Online friends, if you have not done it backwards yet, because I almost forgot, do some backwards. So again, so if, if we're in here, this foot comes right in the back, and that foot almost leaps as this foot's landing. Yeah, that's it. closer each time awesome but a good part about those is as you get better and better that timing comes together and then it almost one foot's leaving the ground as the other foot's landing so you, you start getting that tempo okay next that one we're going to add our angle so now we're going around our imaginary opponent where our feet point becomes very important. And this is, again, a shuffle. So yeah, the, the slow-mo version with the feet. When the outside foot comes, you're turning it. You're turning you it to it. that final angle you want to end up at. So even though the foot, foot's pointing this way now, then I turn, my foot's pointing the other way. There you go. Yep. Yeah, that's it. Good. Yep. Sometimes having somebody in front, like you're either side of me now. Yeah. Exactly. See how that works? <laughs> you didn't have footwork. You teach this time. Let's see if I get a separate show Balka shoes. What's that? There you go. And then we do it backwards because we do everything backwards. So we move backwards a lot in pipes. Some of us do. And if you could do this backwards, <laughs> the good part is that somebody's rushing you, you could literally change that angle. And if they're rushing you enough and you see that the angle works, you can fall away from it and circle again. And we'll talk a lot about that falling in angles and circling later. You know, seven and a half months hiding behind a tree is not easy, I think. <laughs> no, but it does provide entertainment for it her. It does provide kids. entertainment for all of us. <laughs> she went and found a bigger tree. She found the bigger tree. You're right. <laughs> okay. So next up, we got our three steps. So this one, we are adding the step forward and then just do our shuffle across. that have been doing this for a while, add in some direction changes. 
speed them up, et cetera, et cetera. This exercise is set up. A lot of times your opponent will fundamentally freeze when you step into their range and provide tension. So, in this, Jackie's my opponent, and she's right at that range, and I take a step, and I add that foot, I shift immediately to her side. She froze on the first part, and step takes me into a position that's stronger on an angle. Backwards. Backwards. Now we're just gonna take that step backwards, shuffle across. A smaller backwards step than I think it is. Every over ah. Yep, step back. <coughs> It should almost it's feel like sideways. Yeah, it should almost feel like a control it's fall. That was like basically for agility purposes. Agility. All right. So now we're going to do almost the exact same thing. This is our cross bar. We're going to start a little wider, and now this is where we're actually going to cross all the way. So this is your big side to side movement. You can get really far side to side. But the hips are nice still forward. See if I can actually do that here. Yeah. Right click, please spotlight. Right. All right, go ahead, Paul. See what you're doing. Yep, just like that. That first I hit thing. the unmute button. <laughs> Okay, I didn't get this wrong. I was just looking at the screen. It went blink. So what is this one again? So, so what we're doing is the reverse, reverse version. Which one is she doing this time? Oh, it's the. Uh, it's okay, I see the screen. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. That one. Yeah. There you go. Just make sure those hips stay right on your opponent. There you go. Nice job, buddy. That looks good. All right. So we'll go back. You guys can watch how bad I do this. There you go. All right. If you're able to bend your knees a little more and stay down in the spot a little more, it helps. The hips from twisting. So doing that one backwards now. There you go. Yeah. So again. All right. So I'm going to cover four step here. So in the fourth step, we're starting outside the box. Foot, 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 foot. At the beginning, we're gonna try to do it a little bit better. Good stance, right? Foot into small stance, back to a good stance. And then foot, foot, back to a good stance. Foot, foot, back to a good stance. If you got room, go ahead and add a couple in it. Okay? But for now, go ahead. There you go. Good stance. Foot, foot. Good stance. Good. All right. You can also, if because uh, we got a few people here, try this changing directions, like in the middle of it. Go forward a couple. Go back a couple. Yeah, nice, Jackie. So the idea here is, depending on what your opponent's doing, you may be going forward or backwards. 
So you, that's why you want to be able to switch that. And then we're going to do this one backwards. Again, the real big key control is making sure that you're nice and straight. The back is nice and straight. The hips are out, not tilted back. No duck butt. Okay. So again, good stance. We're going to show just a quick modified version, and I'd like uh, all of you guys to do this one too. So, again, the idea is do them correct first, make sure your form is good, and then add speed to them. You can see Cybe added some speed there. In this exercise, we're going to use the length of the ladder a little bit, and this time, all we're going to do is Stay on the balls of your feet. And you don't even need to be on the ladder. You could be off the ladder. And change, change the distance that you're doing them. Okay, we're gonna do that until I tell you to stop. Oh. All right, and go. Hang nice and low and choppy. Change the distances from time to time. That's the way. The idea here is to get, get comfortable with that, that constant flow sideways to sideways. This is almost like doing the two minute drill with a partner. So if I'm fighting, I'm staying up with my partner. I'm staying right in front of them. You got it. All right, good. So the idea on that one is that you're engaging with your partner and never letting them leave or get a corner. Because as soon as they get a corner, it creates a weakness. Then, then you have to do something to adjust and that's their opportunity to see something that may be weak. All right, next. Move into our quick foot stuff now. So starting with our lateral in and out, out. That's our step in, in, out, out. Trying to get the whole body moving forward and backwards, even if it's just a little bit. Try to increase the speed as you do this. Make sure you're not duck butting it on the way out. <laughs> in, in, out, out. Yep. Left, right, left, right, and forward, forward, back, back. <sighs> Yep, and the other way. Again, agility builds, builds that endurance, builds the strength. Every time you're in a fight and you relax, that's an opportunity for your opponent. All right. Next, we're gonna do our forward in and out, out. So now we're just moving forward and your body is staying in a straight line. We're gonna step out to the side and underneath. 
And as with everything else, stay bent through that. Don't stand up when we get in the middle. And watch out for the ladder, it'll bite you. Yeah, you're like, I'm gonna stand aside on this one. I that on the face off, but it not the ladder. Go back. We're going to repeat it, but this time we start with the other foot. The so last time I led with my left foot, so I'm going to lead with my right foot this time. And it doesn't seem like a big difference, and then you'll go, oh my God, what is this? Why? Guess I lead with my right, Norm. Grab it. All right, now we're going to do it backwards. Okay, we are. It's true. As with most things, avoid the temptation to do that. You get your butt under. We talk about that. Keep your hips and butt under and things like that a lot. Because even for people that have been doing this a long time, it happens. Oh yeah. You'll get Constantly. into bad habits, you'll get to lose focus and you'll start doing it. And then your head tilts and you lose some weakness. So that's why you have to be here to help each other when you're doing it wrong. Yeah, I'll stop thinking about it for a while and then I'll come out of some fights and be like, I feel like I can't move and my feet are made of lead and everything is horrible and I don't understand. And one of these people will look at me and be like, have you tried chucking your butt? <laughs> sure enough, <laughs> suddenly I can move place again. You know, Seb, there's a direct correlation between that and power generation too, I found, because when I was fighting a few weeks ago, I found myself leaning, I was like, wait a minute, back under. Oh, stuff's so actually landing now. Okay. <laughs> when you aim it at your opponent and not at the ground. Exactly. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I backwards the other foot, Andrew, and you can aim and stay Whatever's going on with my hamstring. Continuing to make me sad and safe. I told you, you want to switch it halfway through, don't you? Uh -huh. Uh, not easy, is it? I do. Your brain just not want to do that. And, and this is the good part about why we do these. It's so that your brain don't get stuck thinking about this. Your brain can use whatever foot's free to, to do what it needs yeah, to do. You're, you're just unlocking all possible foot combinations. Exactly. In the middle of a fight, when you randomly find yourself here and all your weight's on this foot, your body's like, I got this, cool. Exactly. That's exactly it. <laughs> You don't have to be in this one position to make stuff work anymore. Okay. We have a ladybug friend. I know. Puppies. Puppies are the thing for foot movement. <laughs> yes, they are. All the time. Try and dodge four dogs that all want to treat at the same time. That's what you want to do. Sounds like baby. There are a lot of ladybugs. Everywhere. Try four cats that want dinner. I'm sorry, I've got no camera today, but I'm here and I'm doing the stuff. <laughs> Everything stays facing forward, a whole body, jump in, jump out. You can either do both feet up and down at once, or you can do Just make sure you put that open close the same way. Which means you go the other way, but we're going to do all of our full speed. Now turn that foot out. Get your hips straight. There you go. Right? So, yep. You're going to want to turn it in, try to force it out. That will keep your, yes, that will keep your hips straight at your opponent. Okay. Very excellent point. Don't, don't let the hips turn sideways like this. 
which is often led by having a foot turned sideways. It's really easy to jump side to side like this. Everybody wants to do that, but that's not what we're working on. That's right. And again, what this is supposed to be is you're falling, lifting that front foot, falling forward, lifting the back foot, falling backwards. Start switching feet here. So later we're going to show you a little bit of difference between kind of how that jab steps and then roll back. You might, you might throw the jab and then roll into another corner. Now the one that I uh, forgot to write on the whiteboard. Uh-oh. Switch, switch foot. Line. So we're going to here and then just in place, switch your feet. Do that down the ladder. And then, we'll just go straight back. <laughs> a, a, a song Worry about crossing your legs. Yeah, you don't, don't, don't worry, worry they don't actually legs. cross. It's just yeah, you just fall. Oh, so you had your feet. Yeah, I mean, uh, you yeah. So what happened here was this foot was here. Mm -hmm. Whoops, excuse me. This foot was here. So when you tried to get it over was, here, yeah. Here. So start with with this foot in the box mm -hmm. and this foot in the next box. Okay. Switch. Your sideways motion happens while you're in the air, so yeah. you don't have to step over, you just jump sideways. Yeah, while you're in there. Okay. Oh, oh. No, just straight front. There you go. Mm -hmm. You can think about Another it less, less to, of this and more of this. You can always work on this okay. one just right with the, in the last with the heads. Yeah. 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 And, and then you just start moving yeah. it sideways. And you can see, even as she starts moving it sideways, she's not leaning her whole body sideways. She's just changing that center just a tiny bit, and the body automatically flies sideways. Ever so slightest, you know, push with the leg. Physically impossible to move this without something in your feet. But if you just think about it from here, it'll happen without you having to think about feet. All right. Oh. All right, what do we got next? We got the two forward, one back, or just large forward, small back. So get in your stance, do a jab jump forward, and then a smaller one backwards. Big one forward, small one backwards. And this one you can go ahead and pretend you got a sword and shield, or if you're not used to it yet, just Make sure you're doing it well. Keep on those balls of those feet. Yep, done it on one leg. Switch to your other stance. That'll probably make you real sad inside and do it on the other side. Huh? The lady bucks? Yeah. That's okay. I would rather lady buck bounce off my face than these. Yes. Much better than beast. No 
All right, backwards. Yay. We're only gonna do one of these backwards. So pick whichever foot, big jump, fall forward. Again, the idea here is, oh, is that somebody's coming at you and then you jump back into them. So if, if I had a scenario where or he starts walking on me, I might jump back and, and then pop forward. So here we are, he's walking, hey, and then, hey, and then I jump forward take control of that fight again. The good part is we're actually getting in some good footwork, good strong leg footwork today. I know probably for a number of us, I don't know about you, about everyone else, but for me, uh, it's been a little while since I've gone through every piece of this drill. It's an endurance drill, too. Woo! All right, last one, turning step. This is the one that has 800 million variations. We're probably not going to do all 800 million today, but we'll start with the basic. Or eight. <laughs> eight 800 million, same thing. Close, close. Start in whatever your normal stance is, face the ladder. Back foot's gonna lead. So back foot steps in the ladder, facing the direction you're moving, and you flip around. And it just repeats every time. Back foot in the ladder. Back foot. Back foot to your knees to go all the way around. It bothers your knee. Just do it a quarter way and do 45 instead of the full turn. What we're learning here is all about turning your feet depending on where you're going. A lot of people don't turn their feet when they're passing by an opponent to keep that circle around your opponent going. You end up going off in a straight line to the side. Exactly. And like Saif said, you end up going straight past and releasing that tension on your opponent, which allows them to essentially take the fight back if they if they want to or if they're ready to. Or alternatively, you overcorrect and you just run right into them <laughs> instead of going around them. And then you're too close and not where you wanted to be. So Louie's showing it backwards. But first, let's do the, the front foot. Yep. And now we're going to do, I'm lining up in the same stance. You know, I'll start on the same side and everything. So I've got my same foot forward and back, but the front foot's going to lead this time. Step in the ladder, facing down. So now this first step is smaller, and then the second step's a lot bigger than on the last version. And then it's just that tiny little step at the end to get your foot in place. So that's really where this gets a little confusing. You're changing which step is the big step and which one is the small one. For an example of this, if Saib was in front of over here and and essentially he takes an outside step with that or an outside step with that front foot, then she's way she can be way over on the other side. Same thing, she can take her step with her back foot and then be on the other side. The big piece here is just creating that nice flowing motion. And then again, this is backwards with that. Really showing us all how the backwards works. And 
stand on the balls of his feet. Important, important. And then the other variation is you do all of the forwards and backwards with your funny foot stance. So for me, my right leg would now be forward. And we start with that back leg and flip around. Halfway through, I'm going to switch and go backwards. This is where, again, every exercise can be changed up, especially with everybody here who's done this enough. They could literally jump into the next position if you want, skip a, skip a whole spot. The idea of adding variation breaks up that pattern, breaks up that pattern in your mind and just allows you to make sure that you can skip a whole, maybe a whole step. So instead of, you know, here I am in this back one, instead of taking the next one, I might go way over here. I start with the back, but you're welcome to do whichever version you want because you we are not yeah. exclusively running through all eight variants. Also, there is no rule that says you have to do the back foot first and then the front foot. Do them in whatever order makes you happy. <laughs> he is just doing many variants to get your feet used to doing all the variants in those different ways. This is my weak one right here. That this left leg does not like being in the back and trying to catch me. Yeah. It does not like it. This is my weak one too. And then my body gets all out of position. Woo! And I slide. All right, I'm gonna see how everybody's doing. Looks like most people have got your band, it's still burning through his, that's good. Ball's working his still, awesome. Looks like we may have lost Nessa. All right. Yeah. Unless her knees just start to bother her that much. Or, or that, either way. <sighs> it says the internet and laptop are not cooperating with me. Oh. Okay. Well, hopefully it's it's be halfway decent on Facebook for us. All right. So that is all the ladder drills. Woo, we made it. So our next piece, what I'd like to go through, is a little bit of that drill we talked about earlier. Um, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use some cones for this one. Like here, I'll adjust the camera so you can actually like stay off the ladder. <laughs> There we go. All right. So in this code drill, the idea is we're going to start in the center. Just like we do on a ladder where we're, we're sliding left and right here. But the difference is now we're going to slide in this angle. We're going to go forward and then we're going to turn this. So I'm still, my angle is, my hip is falling into this direction. And then as soon as I hit the outside of this cone, my butt falls and does a halfway circle around. And then it gets stuck in the cone. Okay, so here we go. I'm forward in here, now I turn. Uh, 
big one above there. No, it's center cone. It's center cone doesn't matter. Uh, center cone just gives me a start. So the idea, if I start behind a center cone, here I am. I should actually pass in front of that center cone. And then back. So start this nice and slow and do it. If you have to push the, put your points out. And the idea here is, here I go. Just feeling, feeling. Okay. Now you could do this like a little bit. If you feel like the center is in your way, you could totally get away with it without, like Louis says, I could, I could toss that and I could just start in the center between the two cones. Okay. So if these tight turns in here are too tight, think of them larger. Think of the cone in a, in a three foot circle. In other words, I, I'm gonna come way out here and then I'm gonna go over to the other cone, come way out here, way out here. Again, your feet should be following where your hips are going. Go ahead, Louis. So I was just gonna say, if you have an opponent here. Yes. It's like I switched to that camera because it's got better light. That one that has better light? Yep, it's and it's, it's got a good angle on you. Okay. So the idea with my opponent is I'm gonna push into this spot. They may follow me and I'm gonna push them back a little bit. Okay. So here I pull. I push. So if the opponent just stays, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be over here. I don't care anymore. I'm going to do the back of the leg. The idea is this is I'm going to push into this corner. If my opponent tracks me, then all of a sudden they push tension. That might be this, but I'm rolling right back into the other corner. Right? The idea is what we see a lot of times is I push and then I'm back and I'm freeing into those spots. The idea here is like I'll push. And I'll, I'll sink it back and I'll push. And these get really small into these corners, right? And then depending on what my opponent gives me, depends on what I do forward and back. So if Louis starts at me and then stops, I might push. And if he starts at me again, right? Oh, so as he double jabs at me, I'm just falling back. And then, but I, then I'm going to go back forward again. Try to take command of that position. So Louis could literally be walking at me. And then I'm going to try to see now, see now I'm walking at him. Because I changed my position. So that's what this exercise does. Helps you understand how to essentially create that eight. So watch Louie's gonna do the eight and I'm gonna track him. Got to do the eight. Perfect eight. Yeah. Push on that side, there you go. So be careful on those jabs because you stop it, right? So when he stops, I, I'm free to do something else. So now just make it a nice flowing. Now just go around, yeah, now push back in. Right. See, now all of a sudden you get that space. Whereas if I change my tension on you, maybe you don't push for a second. And then as soon as I let up, then you push. So watch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show what happens in this space. I'm gonna go ahead and push on a 45 into him. He's a slow, he's slow. Uh, he's gonna roll into that 45. As soon as I release, then you, he can come. Yeah, there you go. As soon as I release, so it's not so much the foot in the end. This is much more about that engagement with the person. So a lot of times I'll do this. Hey! Notice I step back for a second, and then I start putting tension back. So that was the jab and then flow. So in this case, I'm, I push. Yeah. 
see how I'm flowing with it that same distance. But I'm not gonna let go of that distance. When you add the jab in, it breaks that up a little bit and you have to re-engage and flow. But for now, the idea is to get comfortable with changing. Okay. See it? So for now, what we're learning is how to big circle, small, and you're just staying perfectly straight. My body is straight up and down. All right. So the idea is I'm learning that flow of my hip from front to back, just like we do in our drills, right? We're always leading with our hips. We're learning to trust where our hips put us. That's what we're doing with this drill. In execution, then our opponent is part of the execution. My opponent still, I'm not gonna break from my opponent if they're still going back. But as soon as here I am, I'm pushing on Lewis, as soon as he changes to go forward, now I'm falling back, there's my figure eight. Nice, right, then he changes. See what's happening there? And then he changes. So I release, I can pull him a little bit. So not only do I have tension here, as he's going away, but when he, he tenses, I pull it. I'm creating opportunity on a pull. Instead of, don't think of this going backwards as, oh, I'm, I'm trying to get away. That's not actually what you're trying to do. You may be creating opportunities for a shot. All right, I'm gonna throw a couple of cones up for everybody and try to make it as smooth as possible. Do it about three foot around those. Pretend these things are about three foot large. And Dred, yeah, try to keep your back nice and smooth, small feet. There we go. Keep those small feet. I'm gonna watch a little bit. So for everybody in the house, all you do is just put those cones on your ladder. Yep. And then go back to Germanicus. That's like exactly. I'm gonna put you on screen if you don't mind so I can see you in bigger form. Uh-oh. It is. It's the ground's getting dry enough now. That's the way to keep that back nice and straight, Germanicus. Very well done. Yeah, nice big circle. There we go. Good. Nice and smooth circle. Even I wasn't doing them very smooth at the beginning. So, so this is a new exercise. I want you to be thinking while you do this exercise that imagine an opponent in front of you as you push. And then they're pulling them. And then you're pushing them. And then you're pulling them. You're in control. The idea is that you're, you're always in control of the range between you and your opponent. Ball, I'm switching over to you. All right, let's see how you're doing. That's it. Try not to stop, just kind of roll and no, smooth out those hops a little bit. That's it, bend those knees a little. Nice and smooth. The lower and smoother you get here, the better. Even if you have to do it slower. There we go. But be careful, always want to keep those hips in straight at your opponent still. Pretend that opponent is still in front of you. That's the idea. So I'm going to switch back to us so you can see everybody doing them. There they are. <laughs> Five legs going here. So, so that's the idea. Is so be careful standing up. What I see a little bit is people turning when they hit the edge of the, the cone. The idea is we don't want to necessarily turn when we hit the edge of that cone. We're we're straight. That cone's in front of us, the cone goes behind us. The cone is not our opponent. Opponent is here. That's right. Your opponent is here. So if Pretend side. Go ahead. Make sure I can actually see. 
<sighs> okay. I'm gonna pretend side with my opponent and I'm gonna push her into what's gonna be to the right of, for me. And I'm gonna push her back. And then she's gonna wanna come. Well, no, I'm probably going to wanna fail. All right, so come out here a little farther. Oh, did you open? I'll let you over here. All right, so here I am. I'm gonna push this way. Right, so, okay, no big deal. I can keep following you all day long. Right? Some point, you're not gonna wanna do that. So at some point, you're gonna wanna take over that, that, that board of, so you're gonna go a different way, right? So even here, I'm giving you space to go, ain't I? And I give you the space. I invite you into that space. And then she broke back on. You can see, even when, she, even when she breaks back, I can go ahead and fall into that space. Now I'm just doing the same thing to you. Right. Totally just doing my own figuring. Exactly. So the idea is that we're not releasing our opponent. This is what would normally happen. Here I am. I push into this side. And if she goes away, I keep just following or I'll stop, okay? Or she just turns, right? So I push into this corner. She could just keep turning and then I could go ahead and beat around because as she kept turning, I know I'm the person leading the turn, right? So the idea there is I push over here. Now she takes that space up. So now I'm like, okay, at some point she's gonna wanna counter attack or <laughs> instead of allowing her to set the initiation for counterattack, I could push this space and then invite her, give her that space where she wants to move forward. And then I push it again. And then give her some space where she wants to move forward. And then I push her again. What's happening there? Right as I'm ready to go, he's like, ha! Ah! <laughs> so the idea in this exercise is we're in control of going forward and backward. All right? So, but we have to learn that flow of the body here. And again, this doesn't have to be fast. It's here. Sometimes the speed may change depending on how, what your opponent's doing. To you. So you can change that, kind of double feed it here and there. And add a little switch foot or whatever you want in there to, to change what's in front of your opponent. Again, this is, this is all about creating a fight with your opponent. You're, you're pushing their edge, you're creating space to invite them, and then you push the other edge again. Shape of the figure eight can also change. Shape of the figure eight can change. Very deep forward and backward. 100%. And slide, or the, the whole thing changes. Yes, I mean, literally. Tiny yes. Thing here. There's, the whole figure eight. There's your whole figure eight. Or here's my whole figure eight. Right. So, there's, there's not one eight. We're just practicing one to get started. Yeah, this is, so we have a lot of engagement with our understanding of our hips already. This engagement adds us to that next layer of, of understanding how using your body to keep engagement. Because what we see a lot is, you know, like a jab foot. I can do these jabs, but I still do the jab foot a lot. Uh, Ron Butler does this flow a little bit. I, I do it more in uh, uh, a jab and then flow. But here's what we see on a jab foot a lot. It's like, hey, and then we're just back. But that back isn't necessarily inviting. That back is I know I have to get back away. I, and I fall straight back or maybe to a corner. Instead, what I might do here, and it's, as I'm falling straight back or to a corner, there's, you have to create another flow out of that. Otherwise, you're just falling straight back all the time. But jab, fall, go. See the difference? So here's a jab and back. Now she don't care anymore. Jackie's like, okay, I'm free. Well, watch this now. Jab, not free, right? But in that jab, I was here, a little bit here, one step, and then rolled back up. Okay, so that's the idea. Instead of just, I do a big jab over here and then fall back and free them, I might do a big jab over here and then roll and then roll back up into the corner. 
that is on a plane. We're doing that on a plane. Now that could change. I could, I could literally, you know, we could, I could push down, pop up, push down. I could change heights inside this too. That way, because your opponent will also change heights a little bit because your targeting starts changing. That's a little bit more advanced. Right now, I just want to make sure we all understand. Push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, not just push, disengage. Push, hey, buddy, disengage. Right. Because every time we disengage, it offers an opportunity for your opponent to do something again. I'm going to invite the small man in. Come on over here. Everybody, it's a Saba. He's awesome. It's awesome to have him back. I think Bess, you know. Bess online, too. That one right there. <laughs> hey, nice to see you. How you doing? Exactly. He's over here going, hey, you guys are playing football now? <laughs> so I'd give him a hug for me if you're comfortable doing it, okay? Well, I don't know if he's very comfortable with me hugging him. <laughs> big hug for Beth. All right, big kiss for Beth. <laughs> uh, all right, so again, the idea of this is to keep that engagement to your opponent. So I want to go ahead and this time I want everybody to put their cones closer to each other. Oh, uh, here we are. Real tight. You not a helpful puppy. You not a helpful puppy. You not a helpful puppy. I need you to go. Yeah. You need to leave this room, please. Leave this room. All right. A nice little figure eight there. Let's see that happen for a little bit. Make those legs loose. See how nice and low I am. I'm right here. Hey, super low. Nice Some of the things that help on this once in a while, by the way, especially when you're doing the jab, I jab in. I may actually drop this butt. I'll drop like a half inch inch. Drop that butt, create that backward energy. Here I am. Then drop it. Push over here, drop it. Push over here, drop it. If that dropping helps you pull you into those back steps, give that a try. All right, let's go ahead. Ready? Those cones nice and close. This is one because they are so close, you can actually pick up speed. Start slow, get comfortable, and again, don't turn your hips. Don't keep turning them unless you tend to fight this way. Then as I engage my opponent and I change my angle, I may have to change my hips. Like Paul, you fight this way a little bit more. So, and I've seen that you change your hips accordingly. What about crossing your feet? I don't care. Yeah, we actually practice. So this is, uh, we're talking about crossing our feet a little bit. So one of the drills. Is. So we'll do the shuffle foot. There's three, three motions here. This is, so let's actually let's do gather. The gather is basically a pull, right? That's about the shortest path. And there's three shuffle. Foot. And the trick, the trick is on the cross of It's actually taking it. Right. So the trick with me is knowing where you're going. I don't want you to come at me or never cross if you're coming at me. But as long as I know where you're going, it doesn't matter. You're out on the terrain. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So in football, it's really bad. Yeah, remember to actually switch this up. Sometimes too, maybe go the other way around. 
timing of the feet is challenging. I don't think I've actually tried it the other is way around. Close? No, oh, on the, as close as they are? As close as they are. It's hard. You, you're open to the neck with the here on that outside here. Yeah, and I don't really care necessarily. You may, you may lose some power generation. So, so if I'm pushing in a real tight, maybe just here, I don't care. All stuff. Either turning it, but if you had a crop then you're going to make it um, you almost, you almost get stuck. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But you're turning at the same time. And if you look, actually, there's some great video of Mohammed Ali, and you put it back. <laughs> I know it's tough, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so I said, uh, you know, and, and I guess we all have been in that because we talk about it all the time. And that is that, you know, we could never, you know, he, he was came out of football, you know, at a very high level. And he's like, you know, he could never get anybody to do drills. And, <laughs> you know, right, right, Bess? Holy crap. <laughs> right, but he couldn't get people to do drills in ESCA. And good part right now is, for a while, nobody had a choice. So, and and I think a lot of people uh, have gotten a lot, starting to learn that that they know more now about what they do than ever before. That's what drills do for you. Helps you understand your body, right? <laughs> and agility. Honestly, badly needed. Yeah, I mean, I, I tell you, it's, uh, I've been really happy watching everybody. Um, just, you know, everything from understanding how to move and flow. Uh, it, uh, really, really nice to watch. So does everybody kind of understand what's happening in this exercise and why? The, the hard part is you almost need a partner to help you with this, where you're both doing the figure eight at a time and then Sometimes you don't even need to. You could just have a partner to free form it. You could start by having them say, okay, as I push, when I, when I stop pushing, you come. And then when I take the outside, you go. That way you're both doing it at the same time. And then after, the idea would be to free form it a little bit where your opponent starts pushing you and you follow them. And as soon as they release, you start rolling back at them. Oh, that, that's the idea of having a good partner here. This develops what is called the dance, right? Or that, that connection with somebody. Because the connection with somebody is really important. Um, you know, we've been practicing a lot of understanding of footwork, but I've been focusing on that dance with your partner. You don't push a person around physically. It's, you know, as soon as my partner feels, you know, in, in dance, as soon as they feel you going forward, they know when. And then when I go back, they know when, right? So any way I want to go, the idea is that you feel that the same thing happens in fighting. The more connection you have to your opponent, the more opportunity you can have defensively and offensively. Because every time we break that connection, you're restarting something, which sometimes you want to actually do. But, you know, if you do it just constantly, it's very difficult to uh, set up that good flow. Yeah, yeah. this is pulling me wide. Out yeah, because you have what's happening a little bit here. You're, you're like you're shooting out in the corner. So, I'm not trying to get you, I'm trying to get you to so, yeah, you think. Right, but that's it. Right. Well, I'm trying to think about you. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah. No, and that's fine. The, the trick here is if you're going to find that, okay, the first time I shot, it did work. Second time, I got my feet right in the shoulder. Right? That, that's why we're trying these exercises. So, on these, what I would suggest to everybody is that you change cone height. You can actually put multiple cones and go in and out of most three if you want. If you have somebody to work with, and this could literally be even your dog, if you have a dog, push on, that, push on the dog and then pull, that dog will come at you, but push over to the other corner. Can you guys still hear us? Yeah. Okay, okay. So you get, literally, I'm on the outside of the dog, I get the dog room, he's gonna follow. I get on the other outside of the dog, to follow right so you can try it that way the dog adds a lot of variation to it but a person at the same way what i would say again though is set up a path the first couple times you do this that way you know that you're, you're both following the same line all the time okay, I come on over here. so we're going to just do it me and jack are just going to do the figure eight you're just gonna we're gonna follow if I push as I hit you, you're gonna push and we're gonna do this agree. All right. Don't worry about the post. Ah, that's it. Yeah. I think exactly. No. So as you saw, we started with a figure A, stayed nice and tight. And then I, instead of going back after one step, I went two or three steps. Jackie kept going back. And then I started backwards and she kind of fell into that. So that's how you could set that up with a partner. If you don't have a partner, you got to imagine somebody there with you. Like, okay, I'm gonna push to the outside. I'm gonna push to the other outside. All right, so that way you can visualize a little bit of that. So again, this is a really good connection drill. This is the idea of, you know, staying with your opponent, creating different opportunities and watch as, as we don't have to worry about that connection anymore. Now I can worry about where is your zero? far outside. So now I'm pulling. Is there a key to drop as they're walking forward? Just start thinking about the weakness. Or I think I think a little bit of cabin there because he wants to see what those add to it. All of those we work. They're all techniques you know. But again, you remember this goes back into what we originally talked about and, and that is putting those, those techniques together to create a more. So that's really, really trying to get that. All right, so that's the one piece I wanted to show you. Um, I'm gonna try to figure out, I'm actually gonna be in town next week. We may run this next week again. Uh, we may use Louis as my arm because my arms are the grab right now. And I want, I really wanna go through some Growing stuff. I, I need to get Greg on and uh, uh, our Grimmer on. Um, he had some issues with growing. Um, so I'm going to get 
just go through some understandings of simple techniques of throwing, power generation. Uh, there, there's kind of some detail inside that. Uh, that way uh, we can make sure we're, we're going through those pieces. What I've seen so far is most of the movement I've seen is very good. What, what it's broken down is people want to throw all the time. It's like, I'm going to bang, I throw. I don't, they don't set it up. They don't, they don't see if the opportunities there are. Somebody throws, bang, I got to throw back. You don't have to throw back. So we want to be able to create our own throws when we want to. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that next week. All right. Hope everybody had a good practice. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks.